The Goonies? Goonies? The Goonies? There's Goonies t-shirts everywhere. Everyone loves mischievous kids. Chunk. Chunk is my favorite. Chunk was just awesome. Truffle Shuffle. Still holds up. Still holds up. For kids and adults. The Goonies holds up because everyone wants to remember what it was like to be a kid and be like, wow, an old map, instead of like, why do my knees hurt? The Goonies still holds up because it's a classic kids adventure movie. It's fun, it's got treasure, it's got a tiny little family of criminals. At the end of the day, the town gets saved, which was basically the plot of every movie in the 80s, is can we save this town through unconventional means? The plot of the Goonies is very simple. A ragtag group of kids goes looking for pirate treasure so they can pay off a real estate developer who wants to knock down their houses to build a golf course. Also, there is a family of bank robbers led by an old lady and her three adult sons. It's all very simple. Goonies cranks it up real fast, where it's like, so there's kids on an adventure, and you're like, yeah, and they're like, then they find mob bosses, and you're like, what? And they're like, and they have a deformed son. Did you have three movies you wanted to make, and they only give you the budget for one? So now it's like a pirate mafia monster movie? I don't know, it's the Goonies, man. <laughs> I think the Goonies still hold up for people because it's sort of this like idealistic adventure, like what if, you know? Everybody kind of still thinks, I could find a treasure map tomorrow, who knows? So I think it's just sort of that wanting to believe in magic a little bit. As hard as a kid, I was very disturbed by it. It's very dark, but not in a intentional way, I think. It's just sort of, they're in a lot of danger. It, it, it may have been the first movie I saw as a kid where the kids really feel like they could, like, die. Not even at the hands of a villain, just sort of, you know, but just by exploring, just by adventuring. In the 80s, parents were very nonchalant about knowing where their children were, okay? Kids were just able to just go out and live independently and be gone for days on end to go on this very scary journey to find a ship that is somehow in Oregon. <laughs> I grew up in the woods, so I did a lot of Goonies-like adventuring. Unfortunately, the most we would find would be like a bunch of empty Bud Light cans and like a box of porn. Not as exciting as a handful of jewels. I think the Goonies is the first example of like the modern wave of movies specifically about a group of boys, usually around like middle school, having some sort of dangerous adventure. And the thing the Goonies does that every other variation on this story has also done is giving each kid a very distinct identity where each kid has their thing. Sean Astin's kind of a boring leader kid and you know Chunk is funny and dumb and Corey Feldman's like a wise ass and Data is like you know a nerd. I think Chunk is my favorite because it's like hard to be a funny kid like a legitimately funny kid you know what I mean and he was I mean he did like a lot of screaming. In fourth grade I stole my Uncle Max with two and I glued it on my face. But He's a kid like layoff, you know what I mean? I mean, Chunk is such a great character and we need a character like him to come back where it's funny to fat shame him, you know? First you gotta do the truffle shuffle. Come on, do it! <laughs> like the truffle shuffle, I mean, his friends are like, you gotta do it, he doesn't wanna do it. But then once he gets into doing the truffle shuffle, you can tell he's having a blast. He loves it. He's like, <laughs> he, they were done, they already opened the door and he was still doing it. He loves it. Truffle Shuffle is a classic humiliation <laughs> that he has to endure. And honestly, you gotta give the guy credit. Presumably the rest of his life, he's been asked to do the Truffle Shuffle, which is probably why he became a big shot entertainment lawyer, so he can boss people around. That's true, you can look that up. Well, growing up, watching Goonies, you're just like, this looks fun. I wanna do this. I wanna go on an adventure with my pals, you know? There's an Asian kid in Goonies. There weren't Asian kids in movies back then, so you're like, I'm that guy, even though he's a slightly racist character. But at the time, we were like, eh, that's good enough. <laughs> my favorite performance in this movie is Data, because he's like the whiz kid in the film, and he, knows about the booby traps. Every time I watch Data, maybe it was because he was also the only person of color in the film. <laughs> I'm having this realization now. I think it was like, he was the only person of color in the film and I always was like, yeah, like I wanna be that kid. Data has so many good gadgets. He has the shoes that squirt oil that literally only come in handy for that specific situation. Oh, I got a great idea, you guys! Slick shoes! Slick shoes, are you crazy? Like, what a burden to have that in your shoes all the time, just waiting to encounter Robert Davi and have him slip on a log.
I've got to say my favorite performance, and this is a personal choice, um, it's got to be uh, 16, 17 year old Josh Brolin, however old he was. So I understand that a relationship between he and I when he was that age would be inappropriate. Um, but I don't care. <laughs> it is wild to see teenage Brolin. Like when you see Sean Astin, obviously Sean Astin has grown up, but he is a baby faced man. Brolin like, he, it's like he's a teenager, but he's got that brow. Like Brolin has one of the best brows in Hollywood. And even teenage Brolin has the scary brow. It's like there's little baby Thanos. The Goonies is a children's film that opens with a prison break in which one guy appears to have hanged himself in his cell. Like, that's, that's a pretty dark way to open one of these movies. It doesn't open with the kids. It opens with a bunch of, like, hardened criminals doing violent stuff, pouring gasoline on the ground, letting it on fire to, like, escape from the cops. Goonies is strange because it feels like two different movies that kind of collide in with each other about halfway through. Meanwhile, the kids are trying to get a treasure to pay so they don't have to leave their homes and then they happen upon the Fratellis in their hideout. What is this Italian crime family doing in the Pacific Northwest? How did they come to settle here? That's not where you belong. You know what I mean? It's the East Coast or Italy, baby, that's it. I don't know what you're doing here. There's a lot of really good henchmen work in Goonies. Just classic kids movie cartoon bad guys who don't really do much except fight with each other and get hit in the balls. But man, they get hit in the balls really well. I think the scene that I lock into if I'm watching it is the scene with Chunk and Slob when he's like trying to feed him that first, like that first time. Look, I got a baby Ruth, right, right. sir. Uh -huh. I understand. Whoa. There's like, there's this danger. Like at first he's just like screaming and then he's just like realizing like, wait, like maybe I can befriend this person. He's like, oh, that's actually a human being. There's actually something really touching about that. The fact that these outcasts like come together, you know, these people who are being made fun of by the rest of their peer groups. It's like actually really deep if you think about it. Like really deep. I hope Sloth gets out of this all right. I mean, he's really the one I'm most concerned about of anyone in this movie. Cause like, that guy's gotta go through some rehabilitation and stuff. He's been locked in a basement for most of his life. It must've been tough for the actor that played Sloth, you know? Kind of like, ah. Mom, I made it! And she's like, what are you, who are you? And he's like, oh, I'm the monster that's chained to the radiator. It's me, your boy. <laughs> they were probably making the movie without Sloth, and then someone was like, by the way, guys, it's 1985. This is probably the last year we can get away with doing one of these uh, Sloth kind of deformed guy characters. And they were like, hmm, well, would help the movie. I mean, the scene where they first see the pirate ship is pretty magical. Even that sort of translates if you see it as an adult. That sort of wide-eyed kid wonderment is, is pretty great. I feel like this movie gives a lot of unrealistic uh, expectations about the Pacific Northwest, not least of which is that there are just wrecked pirate ships around. I'm from the Pacific Northwest, and you'd be surprised. There's a lot of secret pirate ships just kind of floating around. So I saw that and I was like, this isn't surprising at all. The whole point of the movie is that they're trying to save the town, right? One of the kids at the end is like, wait a minute, I've got a couple gems here. And then his dad rips up like the paperwork for the town and is just like, we have the exact right amount of money <laughs> to buy back our homes now. It's like, wait, you have no idea. There's like six gems there, man. And I don't know, you're just doing a lot of math very quickly. I think you should not have ripped up the paperwork until you've spoken to a lawyer. When I was a kid, I get, I'm like, yeah, those are gems. They must be worth like a million dollars each. Now I'm like, I don't know, he has to like take it to a jeweler, he'll take a commission. Like how much money, there's taxes. What are you even gonna do with those gems? It's not like you're gonna give them to the, the golf guy and be like, see, here's some gems. I get to keep my house now. What people don't understand is the housing market in the 1980s was very different than it is now. You throw a couple gems at a guy, he'll give you a house. Very standard. The lesson people should learn from the Goonies is if there's a problem in your town, if the people are in danger, get a bunch of kids to walk around and solve it. They'll probably figure it out better than anyone else can. I definitely wanted to be a Goonie when I was a kid. Like I wanted to be in a group of friends that was like that tight knit and like doing things together. Don't say that, never say that. Goonies never say die. They had a motto. Goonies never say die? Like, 
I didn't have a motto. I want a motto. That's why you love the Goonies. You want a motto as a kid. If you haven't seen the Goonies, get out of that hole in the ground you live in, because literally everyone has seen this movie. You're not part of culture, society. You have to see this film. It's, it's a requirement. It's a prerequisite for life.